Hey everybody, I'm Levi Wright, the Assistant Director of Prospective Student Services here at OSUIT, and we're here today in the Natural Gas Compression Program to learn about what a student's time looks like in this program at OSUIT. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that you know if you have any questions through this time, please go ahead and put those in the comments because we want to make sure we get those answered for you today. Even if you're watching this later on when it's no longer live, you can still come back in and put those questions. We'll keep an eye on those comments and get that information to you. We want to make sure those questions get answered. If you have any friends or family that you think would benefit from seeing this, please make sure to share it to them so that they can enjoy it as well. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Pete Brown, one of our instructors, and let him introduce himself. Hi everyone, my name is Pete Brown and yes, I am a faculty member here at the Natural Gas Compression program of uh, Oklahoma State University Institute of Technology. Uh, I've been teaching here about 10 years and uh, we teach about natural gas compression. Uh, as we can see right over here is a natural gas compressor. We teach students how to work on these. Uh, this is the driven equipment and we teach them how to work on the drivers which would be the engines or the motors and that's basically what we learn in, in this program. Natural gas compression is a uh, industry that moves natural gas. Uh, if your house burns natural gas uh, and you have a cook stove that has natural gas, somebody's working on compressors that move that gas uh, so that it eventually ends up at your house and other reasons and, and pipeline, uh, booster stations, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, in this program, uh, we teach you how to use tools. We teach you how to uh, work on engines and compressors. The very first class that you take in this program is called Fundamentals. Now, I'm talking about just this program. There are other general education classes that you take along with those, but the first class in this program is Fundamentals, and we teach you about, first of all, safety, which is extremely important in this industry. Safety is like premier. Uh, we also teach you about tools, how to use those tools, uh, what the tools are called. Uh, we teach you about uh, procedures and how to, uh, to uh, migrate your way around a, a skid and how to blow it down and all kinds of things like that. Uh, and that's basically the fundamentals class. The next class that we do after fundamentals, and let's just walk over this way uh, and we'll look at an engine here. This is a little aero engine that we teach students. We use these engines to teach you how to uh, rebuild an engine. The very first class on engines is called basic engines. And what we do is we learn all the theory and the fundamentals of engines. And then we come out into the shop and we actually tear these little engines right here completely apart and then lay all the tables out on uh, all the parts out on a table. And that's basic engines. And during that time we learn, you know, what tools to use and how to use torque wrenches and all that kind of stuff. The next class is called advanced engines and we reassemble the engine. And so basically that's your first three classes is fundamentals, basic engines, and advanced engines. Now after we do those three classes, then we end up talking about the air fuel systems of the engine. And we actually, we can look over, let's walk over this way and uh, I'll just back up and you can uh, Walk this way with me. We learn about the air and the fuel systems of a natural gas engine. As we look here, this is a regulator. And this regulator knocks the pressure down from the, uh, on the skid. You know, we've actually got three regulators. It knocks it down from a high pressure to a medium pressure, and then from a medium pressure to a low pressure. And then this regulator here knocks it down to a very low pressure to go to the air mixer, the, uh, the air fuel mixer or the carburetor as you'd know it. And then you've got air fuel ratio controllers. And so we teach all that kind of stuff in the air fuel systems. Now the next class after that, I'm gonna let my, our other instructor talk about and it's natural gas compressors. So Mr. Gormley, uh, why don't you talk about that? What's up guys, my name's Taylor Gormley. I'm a graduate of the program. I graduated this program in 2015. Um, after that, you know, went to work in the field for a few years. Um, as Pete was talking about, you know, one of the main concerns in the field is safety. I have a safety degree from NSU Tahlequah. So 
throughout the program, you will get your OSHA 30 class. Um, you'll, you'll graduate the program with your OSHA 30 card. Um, and he was talking about tools also. So we work with Snap-on Mac and Matco. Um, there's around a 50% discount on all the tools you buy through the program. So boxes, tools, specialty tools, electric impacts, air impacts, you know, any pneumatic tools like that, there's, you get a pretty hefty discount on them. So as far as coming to the program with tools, it's not really needed. You, we have um, tool fairs where you'll go and you'll talk to the snap-on reps and the other tool reps and you can order your tools. So as far as compressors go, we'll start with basic compressors. It'll be your first compressor class and we'll, you know, go through compressor efficiency and how a compressor works. It's pretty much an engine without spark. If you took your air compressor in your home and upscaled it, that's what we're working with. They're one-way valves. They have inlets and outlets, suctions and discharges. Um, that's what we'll go through. We'll go through the theory of how they work, how you size them. You always size your compressor over your engine size. Your engine RPM is limited by your compressor, not the other way around. So the driven equipment on these skids is more important than the driver as far as that goes. If you, you build the skid around the compressor. So when we get into advanced compressors, we'll talk about alignment with dial indicators. Um, if they're not aligned, they shake themselves to death. You know, you'll run the main bearings, all that stuff. So alignment's very important. We'll, we will go through that. We'll go through dial indicator alignment, and we also have a new set of Ludeca Easy Lasers. They, we bought two sets um, this past semester. So you will graduate this program knowing how to do dial indicator alignment and laser alignments. Also, in advanced compressors, we'll have the compressor completely apart. You'll learn how to set piston, piston to head-end clearance and piston to crank-end clearance. We'll have scenarios talking about, you know, how you tell what valves do what and how you find an issue. You know, say you have, you know, we'll walk out in the, you know, um, shop and I'll say, all right, compressor went down on second interstage high pressure. What happened? And I'll expect you to tear it apart and tell me what was wrong with it or what scenario could have been wrong with it. Or, you know, you're going down on high temps on third stage discharge. What's wrong with it? Um, as far as compressor teardowns go, we pull the cylinder, you know, we pull the pistons, pull the packers, pull the cylinders off, pull the dog houses or the distance pieces off. Um, the cranks come out, you pull the oil pump, you'll pull all the chain drive off the front. The compressor will pre pretty much be sitting here as a frame. So that's what we'll do with advanced compressors. And I'd like to give it back to Pete Brown and let him talk about some of his other classes. Okay, uh, now after you get through with the mechanical part, basically what we've just talked about is the mechanical part of the program. But that's only half of this industry, actually not even half. There's a lot more in that. We talked about safety, we've talked about mechanical. But then we get to the electrical part of this class. And the very first electrical class that you take is basically uh, ACDC. That's the Basically, we have instrumentation, but then we have ACDC, which is a which is a class that you have to take before any of the other electrical classes. And uh, Mr. Gormley teaches ACDC. Uh, he'll be talking about uh, when he teaches that class. He's going to teach about Ohm's law. He's going to teach about series circuits, parallel circuits, series parallel circuits. But most importantly, you will learn how to use a DVOM. And a DVOM stands for a digital bolt ohm meter, which is extremely important in this industry. How to, how to use one, how to read, how to check for resistance, how to check for voltage drop, those things are all very important. Uh, Mr. Gormley, would you like to talk a little bit about uh, your ACDC class? So in ACDC, um, the most important thing about ACDC is understanding the flow of electricity. Electricity flows like water, it's past the least resistance. So we have these trainers back here. We have these trainers back here on the wall that have 
selector switches, solenoids, resistors, you know, lamp lights, fuses, capacitors, all that stuff. So we'll go through every function of a DVOM, um, how to check diodes, how to check capacitance, um, how to check ohms, how to check voltage drop, how to check amperage, and we'll do it on these trainers. You'll build circuits on these trainers, and you know, you'll have a workbook or a worksheet. It might be hand typed by either Peter or I, or it might be out of a workbook. And you'll build that circuit, and you'll have to take your DVOM and measure values over those, um, over those modules or whatever, and we'll, it'll be graded. But the most important thing about ACDC is understanding how to hook up a parallel, how to hook up a series, how to hook up a series parallel, parallel. what voltage does in a series circuit when you hook two batteries in a series, how it does, you know, when you hook them in parallel. That's really important because a lot of these systems are on a 24 volt system. You hook the batteries up, two batteries, and make it a 24 volt system. So that's what we'll be doing in ACDC. But the most important thing is that you come out of ACDC knowing how to use a DVOM. I mean, not partially knowing and not, you know, guessing. Be like, all right, I have this issue. This is what I'm going to check. You know, because on these units, they're all, most of them ZCM driven now. They're not the old mag driven carburetors they have electronic ignition modules on them so things go bad all the pressures are pretty much on transducers now we don't use manual gauges it's all electronic these days so it's important and imperative that you know how to use a DVOM to the fullest extent um, after ACDC what do we go into yeah, let's, uh, let's walk over this way, and uh, we'll look at a panel board, and I'll talk about the next class that we have after the, uh, the ACDC or the DCAC class. Uh, this is a fairly typical panel, and inside this panel, there, are, there is a programmable logic controller, and there are relays, and there are switches, and there are monitors, and it's like all of, this controls the whole skid. It controls all the shutdowns for the compressor it, it, and everything like that. So the next class we have is actually called, uh, it's a relay class. It's called electronic controls. And we actually talk about relays and ladder logic and digital switches, on off switches and like that. And then the next class after that is programmable logic controllers and we learn how to actually program a programmable logic controller and so that's the next class after that then after we get through with those two classes we're going to end up putting all of the electrical classes together into one class called engine electrical and in engine electrical we're going to cover all the way from magnetos all the way to an electronic control module and the electronic control module controls the engine, it controls the timing, it controls the spark, everything like that. So basically, all the electrical classes culminate into one course at the end of the program called elect, uh, uh, engine electrical. And so basically, that's the program. Now during this program, you're taking all our courses for half a day, and then the other half a day, you're taking general education courses. Uh, you know, comp one, comp two, uh, business math, those types of things. So when you get through with all of those courses and all of our courses, then you go into an internship in this program. The last course of this program is internship. Now, the way internship works is our industry partners, uh, partners like Chevron and Estes and, uh, and Mark West and JW Power, they all come and do a career fair and all the students interview and they interview with these companies and these companies make them offers for their internship and actually since the internship is at the end of the program then uh, you know they can actually you know that ends up a lot of times being their full-time job and so basically that's the program excellent so you did just talk a little bit about the internship what is a typical kind of average starting pay on internship and when they go into industry full-time okay internships basically is somewhere between about 21 and 25 dollars an hour on an internship some internships will include overtime some not as much overtime but that's 
typical, somewhere in that range. After uh, a, somebody has gone through their internship and they've been there for a year or maybe two, it's not. Uh, it's not. It's very you know common for them to be making around thirty dollars an hour as a as a beginning mechanic after they get through their internship and then on up as they as they get promoted and things in the in the future. Excellent. We did have another one. What are the names of the positions that students get when they go into the industry? So what are some of those positions called? Uh, compressor mechanic, uh, I &E tech, uh, plant mechanic. You, you, can, you don't even have to go to the natural gas field with this, um, right. with this program plan of study in particular, you know, a lot of power plants are running gas, gas units. Now they're running, you know, gas power generators. So they hire natural gas technicians or old diesel technicians. But I mean, so you can take this any way you want. You can go into the electrical field, which is I and E tech, or you can spin it that way. You can go be a, a uh, operator, you know, field operator or plant operator. You can go be a measurement tech. It's there's a lot of different jobs you can get um, using this degree or however you want to spin it. There's a lot of jobs in the gas field. So it's pretty much, I mean, the sky's the limit. Wherever you want to take it, you can take it. Um, it's all up to you. You know, some people don't want to spin wrenches. Some people would rather hook up to a meter and check flow. Um, some people want to, you know, drive around, check on the units, operate, take readings, make sure you have oil and antifreeze in your day tanks. That's what operator does. They'll, you know, low condensate, unload and load trucks. It's a lot of different things you can do in the natural gas field. It's not just solely wrapped around mechanics. I mean, it's a business in itself. There's tons of other options. It's just what you'd like to do with it. But yeah, operators, mechanics, meter techs, measurement techs. Um, if you're looking online, that's some of the stuff you would, I, when I look for a job online, I just type in gas on Indeed or on LinkedIn and pull up everything. So, I mean, sky's the limit with this. However you guys want to take it. Excellent. We had another one. It says, after earning the Associate of Applied Science degree, if I want to pursue a Bachelor of Technology, would that be in the instrumentation program? See, the instrumentation program is a program of their own. They have their own plan of study. What we do here is more mechanics based. It doesn't mean that you can't go into something else, but here we teach you the ins and outs of the engine on skid and the compressor on skid and all the functions that come with that. So if you were wanting to be an IE tech, I would try to pursue you to just go into that program from the start. If that's what you feel like you need to do, that would be a better option for you. Can you? Yes, you can. You have to take other classes to level yourself up to that plan of study, but you can do whatever you'd like. Um, but yeah, I would think about you know what your future goals are as far as your life future goals, you know, not your parents, yours, and base your decision off that. We're here to help. You know, you can call Paula Harrell, Kelly DeVille, BJ O'Brien, Pete Brown, or myself anytime. You can find all of our phone numbers or our emails on the OSUIT website. Um, as far as that goes, you know, we're here to help. So give us a call, shoot us an email, anything like that. We'll get right back to you. I know Pete Brown checks his emails within the hour, usually. I check mine daily. Um, if you email me and I give you a phone number, it might be my personal, so you can text it. That's usually the phone number I give out to people. Um, I don't even know my office ex extension as of right now, but you can look it up on the OSUIT website. So get a hold of us. Let us know if you have any questions. We'd love to help you. We'd love to have you in class. Do you have anything else, Pete? I've got one more. Um, are there any opportunities for women in this field, in this program, and what would that typically look like? Definitely. We've had several uh, females go through the program, and they've, they've done well. Uh, some of them uh, have ended up going through the program and become operators. Some of them go through the program and become compressor technicians. So yes, it's wide open. We have a female in the program right now. She's doing well. She's already been through all the mechanical part. She did well through all that. Now she's going through the electrical. And so yes, this uh, this is definitely open. Matter of fact, it's uh, the industry is real opening is real open to hiring uh, females. 
All right, we got one more. We had a student that said, tell Pete Dakota Burns said hello. I was in the program a few years ago. Best choice I ever made. So he wanted to tell you hello. Pete, is there anything that you would say as a last, you know, statement to a student maybe considering the program here at OSUIT? Natural gas compression is really not a real well-known industry to just the average person. But once you get into it and you learn what it's about, to me, and this is my opinion, to me, natural gas compression uh, technicians, that's kind of like the Cadillac, Cadillac of mechanic jobs. It's really good. It's a good, the companies pay well, the companies have good benefits, the companies treat you like family, so it is an excellent field to get into. It's been good to me and it's been good to everybody I know that's in the industry. And so if you like to work with your hands, and you like to use tools and you like to work on uh, tractors or anything like that and you think that you might want to be a technician or a mechanic, natural gas compression may just be for you because it's a really good way to go for that type of uh, work. Excellent. Well, thank you to both of our instructors for taking the time to, to do this with us today. Thank you all for joining. And like I said, if you have any questions, even moving forward, you can come back to these videos. You can put those in the comments and we'll get that inform information out to you. Make sure you follow the Friends of Pete on Facebook and Instagram so you can keep up with these live tours as we go. And be sure to stay safe, stay true, and go Pokes.